Welcome today to our series Natural Medicine. Our topic today is one that has moved us all for some time, which is respiratory protection. Of course, it was brought to us from outside with face masks. But also a very interesting point is how can I protect myself from the inside? So respiratory protection from the inside, is that also possible? And to clarify this question, I have a guest with me today, Guido Bierta. He is the founder of Energy Company. And we are really looking forward to his answer. Hello, Guido. Hello. Hello, thank you. Respiratory protection from the inside. Exactly. In the preliminary talk, we talked about respiratory protection situations that you have today with the masks and so on. And this situation is being discussed, of course. And then you ask yourself, do you inhale CO2 now? if you exhale CO2 beforehand, because you're breathing against a barricade somehow and so on. So, to, to cut it short, when you have a stable immune system, it's not that difficult to deal with this face mask situation. But if the body is energetically weak, has a weak immune system, from our point of view and from the expert's point of view, who have been working with us in the area of breathing for 20 years, that's a critical issue. And one of the experts came up to us and said, well, you have the perfect respiratory protection from the inside. And that's the subject that we basically want to discuss today. Because energy is a technology that simply helps that from the air that you inhale, more energy can remain in the body. Okay. And what influence does it have, or rather the respiratory protection that we are now getting from the outside, because I can't get to the air, or this atmosphere, what am I missing as a result? Could you say something about that, through the protection, protection in quotes, but the face mask, what is it really preventing? What do we need? We humans are actually not even aware of the subject of breathing. So there are several aspects that are influenced by it. First of all, you breathe through something, so you can't breathe freely. A lot happens in the body if you breathe in against a handicap somehow. But also, when you breathe out. So, I don't want to go too deep into the individual topics. The fact is, it's not healthy, bottom line. Neither for the mental health, for the physical one, let's just leave it at that, because the experts are supposed to comment on this. Our experts at Energy say that this is clearly a huge problem. But now I want to come to Energy, because Energy is a method which makes the breathing air more usable, increases the efficiency of the breathing air. Because we have more than enough oxygen in the air, but we breathe out 75% of the energy, or the oxygen unused again. This means that not everybody is able to utilize the air they breathe in to the same extent, like perhaps people who have already prepared for it in a, in a certain form. For example, with energy. Energy is a methodology that helps to better convert the oxygen, or basically the entire breathing atmosphere, into energy. If the body has more energy, it can also better protect itself from problems. For example, this self-imposed problem we're facing now with the face mask, so basically, it's such a complex topic, I'll just invite everyone to deal more with breathing itself. What do we breathe anyway? Air. That's not enough. That is actually disrespectful to the air or breathing air atmosphere. Because water isn't water and air isn't air. There are a lot of details and it's the details that count. We believe that at Energy, we have been bringing a technology onto the market for 20 years. And of course, we have the feedback accordingly, that people from A to Z report advantages in almost all areas. I just don't want to reduce that at all, all now on individual indications or the like. But Energy is a holistic approach from head to toe, so to speak. I can only say that if you optimize your, bre your breathing, not just in terms of the quality of the air that you breathe, but also the way you breathe, you can achieve so much more in terms of health. That's actually the core issue of breathing. 
And whenever you inhale or exhale against an obstacle, from my point of view, there are massive lasting problems. If you do that for a few minutes, it, it won't affect you much, but some people even sit alone in the car and wear a face mask. And you should simply question whether it has to be that way. The protection itself makes sense to a certain extent, but if you're alone, you should perhaps question that again or continue your education in that direction. We recommend our brochure, our guide, the Little Atmos. It says a lot about things that we should actually all learn in school. Okay, okay especially the Little Atmos. That's a brochure that you developed for the viewer so that they can deal with the topic of breathing atmosphere. Now, with regard to this purification from the inside, what would we have to do according to Atmos, the little booklet? Can you give a few examples? Yeah, well, first of all, the importance of water is placed in the foreground because we all only talk about oxygen, 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 but that's not atmosphere. We also breathe water. But the oxygen has to work in combination with the water vapour, so with the relative humidity. You can't separate it, not just oxygen and not just water. That means that's basically a family which belongs together, but which due to all sorts of environmental conditions, electromagnetic loads that we have today in a huge amount, and so on, the balance, let's say the recipe for breathing air, breathing atmosphere, is unbalanced. And we at Energy have developed a technology based on the model of photosynthesis. That means we actually bringing in light, air, water and a little more in the periphery into this optimal interaction. We have a very special light source. We have 21% oxygen in the air, which we don't change. There is no need because as a healthy person, we exhale 75% of the oxygen that we inhale. So we don't need any more oxygen. Light, air, and basically water. And I think water is a very, very exciting topic, which has been massively underestimated because scientists who work for us now assume that we bring the relative humidity, the water vapour, into the hexagonal structure, so other hydrogen bridge situations. And then one also speaks of EZ water, which is associated with Professor Gerald Pollack, who has found the fourth physical state of water, liquid, frozen, steam, and this EZ water, that, that's what it's called. So that describes the structure of the water that is obviously better able to bring the energy into the body. Well, by breathing in water vapour, when we breathe out again, we can put a hexagonal structure in there. No, not like this. Um, so we, we talked about it on another episode. Air conditioning, heating and so on, these are physical influences, which, for example, take the relative humidity out of the atmosphere. That means they basically... St oh, okay. That's what's behind it. That means externally or with energy, you can externally prepare the breathing atmosphere in this way, that it can simply produce more energy in the body. That we can absorb it better. That's just a small device, the size of a video recorder. They're almost non-existent these days, but that's roughly the size or, or like an open magazine. So, and, and this device basically sucks in the room air and conditions it. So basically we have a, a little photosynthesis in it. Uh, at least it imitates it. And if you regularly inhale this air, depending on what you want to achieve, exciting things happen in the body. We've loads of people who've used this in the therapeutic area, regardless of the clinical picture. There's often talk of enormous benefits, even with COPD. This is a chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, which is affecting 8 to 10 million people in Germany alone. They benefit massively from energy, although it's just air, but air with a certain effect. You can perhaps compare that normal air is, is like gasoline, how normal gasoline is. And if this normal gasoline is upgraded by energy, it's like premium gasoline. So that's relatively difficult to understand or to explain it plausibly, because we humans simply don't know enough about the air. Like a refinement. Basically, yeah, we increase the efficiency. 
I mean, we're here in southern Germany, an area which deals a lot with automobiles. So a carburetor consumes gasoline. If the carburetor or the injection system, is, if that's well adjusted, then the optimum efficiency is achieved. If that somehow isn't set optimally, so the air isn't in proportion to the fuel and the oxygen, then the engine simply doesn't run smoothly, in the truest sense of the word, has more exhaust fumes, maybe also needs more fuel. However, energy optimizes the oxygen or the interaction in such a way that it's actually the most efficient. And that means... Yeah, this is like bad air and good air. You know how it works. And there's another increase. And no matter what air gets into this device, in the vitalizer, that's what we call it, it, it always comes out better. But we also have a lot of customers in Norway. They said, we don't need that in Norway. We've beautiful flora here. Lots of water, lots of photosynthesis. But behold, they also have diabetics. They've also COPD patients, migraines, anything. Only when they breathe energy, they suddenly report positive successes. OK, so we simply have a more extensive, improved use of the quality of the atmosphere of the oxygen itself, which in turn has consequences, positive in the case. Mm -hmm. Let's assume because of these corona measures, I had now a very strong feeling that by following the respiratory protection rules, I get a headache or tiredness, listlessness that can all be consequences. Do you already have experience of people who use energy to regenerate after this drama of breathing protection? Yeah. yeah, well, the people who have been dealing with energy for years, of course, have a completely different awareness. That's what we want to encourage or want to achieve, that people deal with the air in the first place. And of course, we get all the feedback. I already mentioned they said, now you have exactly the breakthrough, more or less. Now people finally understand how important it is to breathe freely, breathe well and breathe the right air. So, uh, of course, it makes sense. The existing customers, pre-users, the doctors, they all do it themselves, of course. But on the other hand, they now also sensitize people who were otherwise laughed at and say, you with your energy device and so, so on. And all of a sudden, the families had the living room full. Oh, you have this there, let me try that out too. Then they came 10, 20 times and then noticed the benefit somehow. So I do believe that we have made a certain contribution to this, that that awareness increases. And I can only recommend it to anyone who wears a face mask during the day to regenerate in the evening and then take in energetic, vital air again. Because then the body can regenerate more quickly and, and come into better balance with the stress that it's inflicted on itself. Yes, precisely, because you have been around for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. And you also supply and support many doctors with your device. There would have to be some there too that, let's say, are all in the operator room all day and have to wear face masks. So you have already had feedback from doctors or maybe nurses in those 20 years. Or is it perhaps also used in clinics that they say that employees should use this to regenerate? Yeah, so there are all sorts of clinics, but these are usually private clinics, like the Harani Clinic, which I think was in Hearn. That was a sleep clinic, or Jägerwinkel Clinic here in Bad Weissi. Basically, they've all been using it for precisely this topic for years. Uh, doctors often come to the practice on Monday mornings and say, wonderful, I'm so happy that I can revitalize again. Bottom line, so we don't want to make any exception. We don't want to concentrate too much either because it's about air, about air. And what's the first thing you basically did when you came to Earth? Breathed. What's the last? Breathing. And we just have to be much more aware of that. And there are reserves in this air. We've already got a lot. We've already got a lot out of energy. We don't know either. Maybe a little more or something can be done. But ultimately, never change a winning team. And we've brought tens of thousands of machines onto the market that are still running today after 15 or 20 years. Of course, people are happy about that too. We just get so much feedback that I can't even channel it somehow. But if a few thousand doctors worldwide use it. 
and entrepreneurs, athletes, Formula One drivers, Bundesliga players. There must be a reason for that. We can argue as much as we want, but who would breathe hot air if there's feedback after 10 or 14 days at the latest? As they say, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. Yes, but the respiratory protection germs or mould can, of course, also form under the mask. You can now hear that the number of herpes patients is increasing, especially the cold sore, which is then moved upwards towards the eye via breathing through the canal. Can I also control the body through breathing? We have already heard that the immune system is increased, but can I also bring bacteria or germs back outside through the good air? So a kind of self-cleaning? So, at least in the human body, that doesn't work. But a good idea. Then we'd have to see if this can be implemented biologically. No, that's not possible in, in that form. But the nice thing is, when you have a stable immune system, a good diet and so on, then bacteria and viruses are, are not that bad. Because I believe we consist exclusively of bacteria and viruses. I, re I read that somewhere. And that's a family. And of course, you can crystallize one out as the black sheep, you have to put it all into perspective. So if you have a stable immune system, you can probably deal with a lot of viruses and bacteria or other situations with hygiene issues and so on. So if the body has the energy, it can handle everything. I keep saying. And it can also regenerate to a certain extent. For example, there, there is an eye condition, which is called macular degeneration. That's a, a special topic. And many people over 75 are affected. I believe now it's already 5 or 7% of German citizens. And if you deal a, a little with breathing air, then you know that the heart is the strongest consumer of oxygen, followed by the brain and then the eyes. Why the eyes? Because they're constantly in conflict with the moisture somehow. This means that ultimately free radicals are produced massively. And it's very important that you have antioxidant protection for your eyes. And because we have hundreds of meters of capillaries in there, more or less, and the flowability is increased through improved energy, through this better breathing air, suddenly the eyes can be better supplied with blood. Okay. Okay. And that's also a phenomenon that was only pointed out to us after a few years because all kinds of people came up to us, can it be that my eyes are somehow getting better? Yes, it can be. Because when they regenerate or when they're better supplied with blood and with more vital substances, then garbage can also be disposed of because hardly anyone knows that we detoxify around 70% through through breathing. And with that, I actually get to the point of what you just asked. And there is an inf information brochure, a guide called What Keeps Us Alive. That's basically what it says in there. So I believe we detoxify 70% through breathing, 20% through the skin. And only, I think, 3% by going to the restroom. Or something like that. that that's the next detoxification. So that's all in the brochure. And I can only recommend it to everyone. Where, how can I get the brochure? The easiest way is to visit the website, lebendigeluft.de. This is a landing page, for example, the little Atmos can be found there. There are all sorts of interviews that were made at some point. So, uh, as a quick in overview, because if you really want to get into the subject of breathing, then you have to invest at least as much time as, as if you wanted to know about wine or motor oil. People with passion do that. But I found few people who do that with breathing air. One more little question. People who deal with something out of passion, how did you come to deal with the subject of atmosphere and air at all? So, in the end, by sheer chance. But I, I had through various situations. I used to do motorsport, and there it's normal to have accidents and have one or the other injury, a fraction here or there. So, cumulatively, I've been in the hospital for about two years of my life. And I wondered every day that I lay there, why is there an oxygen connection on every bed? And everywhere you are, there are only oxygen connections. And of course, I then dealt with this topic. But then forgot again, because then I also had something to do with <laughs> with engines. And there it is. If, if you add the gasoline and the air volume, it's called the air volume control. Sometimes you just have to turn it a little bit over 
left or up or down, and suddenly it's a completely different engine. And that exactly describes energy. We kind of do a little something and suddenly it works better. Not because we need more oxygen, not because we need more gasoline. Just make the best of what's there. And that's what energy does. Quality, not quantity. And then one day I, I somehow accidentally met people who came up to me. They were looking for a businessman and an investor. And that was then found in my position. Yeah, and I've been doing it ever since. It was a, a gut decision. Well, you are speaking here as an entrepreneur who actually also has the approach of really doing something good for people. And you don't have a medical background, but you have brought specialists on board. We always say, ultimately, keep it simple. And you can see the body in a very complicated way, but in the end, we have, let's say, gasoline lines and control lines. They're not fiber optic cables, but there is information going through. Light, biophoton, energy, electrical and so on. We are electrical beings. And for that, we need oxygen. And if we put the oxygen in there, it's actually like tuning or increasing performance or, as they say today, doping. And that's a word we, we don't like. But we can also say we got a clearance cert certificate from NADA. That is the National Anti-Doping Agency, okay. because we have a lot of top athletes, as I said. Yeah. There, uh, there are some Formula One that we're not allowed to discuss, some we're not allowed to name. But right now in Austria, Marco Rossi is his name. Uh, this is a top, uh, a top ice hockey player who, by the way, was referred by Tony Mathis. Tony Mathis is also a physiotherapist who's been working with energy for 10, 15 years. He, he looks after the whole AMG team, the DTM drivers and so. On. but also top athletes from Austria, Switzerland, and Marco Rossi is one of them. And he came up to us last year dealing with asthma. We received a reference letter last week. So he's arrived in at the top level in Canada in his age group and no longer has an issue with it. So I love this topic and I, I just want people to be more aware of, of what it's about, namely about breathing. Again, nothing's more important. Very good. Thank you for the overview and for being here. And yes, I will now deal more with the topic of atmosphere and purification and breathing from within. Yeah, great. I'm happy. That was my goal. And I'm also happy that we had the opportunity to do the interview, that you simply approached it with an open mind and found the questions that everyone should be asking. That we don't always go that deep into the technical subject. It's logical. Three minutes without breathing, then the brain performance is actually over. The first brain cells die. And that's it. To point out the significance again and put it in the foreground. Yes, thanks. Thank you too. Thank you very much. So, dear viewers, it is, of course, very important to us to give you an overview of the various things that we can really use here as possibilities to make our life even more active, to stimulate regeneration processes, and also a really great topic today, energy. And again, I learned a lot again. I hope you did too. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. All the best. Bye.